Hello, 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 and welcome to another Rungru cast, me, Rungru, and today we are doing a 2v2 on Pondspo. So, on the right hand side, in blue, playing as Blue 4, we got Max Rail and Sniper 190. And on the left hand side, in red, playing as Red 4, we got Zen Teapot and Special Art Service. And those Special Art Service guys are rather scary, I have to say. You definitely want to. Stay out of the uh, out of that firing line. But anyway, we're going to speed things up, get things going. I'm guessing we got a like a Yugoslav a check combination and a Finnish deck up top over here. Off for blue, we got ourselves. Seems like just like an American player. Don't see any Canadian vehicles, so just America for Maxwell. Our sniper is going. Scandi? Oh, that looks rather Scandinavian. So you're going to speed things up. Uh, quite a lot of stuff going into Bravo from Blue. But we do have that MI-35, some special art service, and... Because there's not really any A here, so for the Singers, it's going to do a lot of damage. Completely stopping out of Sode, and then allow special art to get into position up top. Uh, yeah, pretty much uh, Sniper getting in position as Red 4 moves up rather heavily. Rear of the uh, Finnish Infantry. And that M91 definitely going to be the side back to here. Pretty much the only heavy tank on this area. I've even got some reserve infantry from the Yugos. Which is an interesting choice, I have to say, because they're straight out of World War II. And some submachine guns in the rifleman ain't going to be enough to kill out before. And if you look at the bottom hand side, uh, Red's completely neglected Delta. Completely, there's, there's nothing in here. And with just a few IPA from Zoom from Tree, they're going to get into Delta. Which, if they can hold on to it, which is rather hard to do because this is kind of far away. But if they can hold on to it, it's plus two sector. Yeah, that is some very nice points. So they are losing quite a lot of ground up top. Bravo is pretty much completely out of air control. And the same with Echoes, you can see Zen Teapot doing a fantastic job. Just you've got fast support vehicles in the back as infantry take the front line, even Stug 3 is doing their thing. And a really, really fun little tank has Stug 3. I mean, there's only five points, so if you lose it, it's that's like seven seconds worth of points lost. Because you get like, no, it's like, you get seven points every five seconds, so that's like three, four seconds of points lost, if we're looking at it in terms of time. That Bravo CV being put down. The Blue Fort is still gaining a plus run because they have Char Charlie on the air control. And he actually setting up in the bottom of Bravo, it's a rather smart thing to do, try to get a foothold in this town, considering that the Red Fort guys are mainly just holding the road up top. Gonna be sneaking some light riflemen in yeah. Not exactly the best infantry choice, but when you play America, you have to uh, deal with what you got, which is not a lot usually. As we've got the reserves moving into position. Now Echo is very, very heavily defended here yeah, from Teapot. Got the Trotty. He has to be playing a Polish finish. Coalition, I want to say. NC 24 M4 dropping in some bombs, completely riping out the riflemen. And we've got some helicopters flying over Delta. And because only really tanks and infantry, they can't exactly do all too much. So, so cool. There we go, finally shooting the Rangers. The MI 35 taking quite a lot of machine gun fire. Seems like it's going to go down. Will it go down? Holy crap, it managed to survive! Huh. I was not expecting that. So cool now taking the machine gun hitch. Yo, he is going to be coming back and yeah, he does finish off the infantry guy. So the Abrams, no missiles, so it can't exactly do much. It might be the best idea to get out of there, but yeah, that was pretty lucky in Macro. And whoa, 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 okay. Fortune Shaker, sneaky beaky play here from Sniper 190. Knocking out the enemy CV, I'm surprised he spotted it. But it, is, it was on the edge of that forest, so I guess he just barely saw it. 
But damn, that is going to put a wrench into Red Force plan. They're going to be pulling back CV from Foxtrot. Yo, oh, he, these guys could intercept it halfway through. It's moving completely unsupported, and that may not, may not be a good idea. And they're not even doing too much to clear out the infantry in the back line. They still know that the recon guys are in go for. He must know, because how else would the CV get seen? And it's running so close to the Finnish infantry. Uh, not Finnish, goddamn Shreda's infantry. Oh, this, this isn't looking good. Really big mistake in moving this unsupported. SCRF 904. Too bad he didn't move it out earlier. Could have killed it. And, oh, the four shaker get the kill. Uh, the SCRF does. And that means Red Force only CV is in Bravo. That's the only command vehicle they have. So, uh, if they lose this, they lose the match. But fortunately for them, going from Bravo onto Gofi is much more safer. And now this is the perfect time for Blue Force to strike. I mean, Delta, you could actually do a pretty good job attacking into here. Or just get into more command vehicles and get the bigger point advantage. Because they have a lot of time on their hands. And even when the CV gets back into Gof, Red Force is going to have to start spending some money on recapturing the zones that they lost. So very, very good play out from Sniper. Literally sniped a CV out of the enemy sector. And oh, the SCRF is very close to intercepting. He needs to buy helicopters. Yeah, BTR 40, so cause cool. so MI24. He needs to get another command vehicle, yo. Because this is kind of out in the open. Only a few trees to really protect it. I mean, that's, that's actually pretty well camouflaged. I mean, if you're back here, like, yeah, that's, that's pretty not noticeable. Good thing it's painted green. And these four shakers, kind of in the middle of all this now, as Recon scour the, scour the heights, and the so-called does spot it. Four Jager being forced to move. Yo, if they stayed here, the FOB could have resupplied him. And now we've got Formosa's, well, forming into the position. And there, they, they've done their job, yo. They can die happy. They do have attacks into Echo to try and retake the point. Lots of Stormers. They do have two uh, pretty heavy tanks here. And the Stormers only have Carl Goose down to so one point of damage. M4 coming in, gonna be dropping in the bombs. Kills his own infantry, fails to kill the Marine Joe. And I did that was a command vehicle? Was it? I don't believe so. Right? Yes it was, yes it was. It's rather smart place or smart guess, because usually you would put a command vehicle here, because it's one of the only hidden sectors. If you are gonna put a CV in Bravo. It's honestly best to get an infantry command vehicle. And we got the M4 coming in again. And one thing about Blue Force, they don't have much AA. We got A1 Saparels of all, <laughs> of all things, which, well, not exactly the best unit to buy. The A3 is a much, much better choice. So these SU-22s are just going to keep coming in and dropping in our know, hot, sicky payload and saving the Nighthawk here. I mean, uh, god damn, he's playing the Ego Slav deck. He should have instantly shot that out of the sky. The memes, the memes have been lying to me. Here we've got some ranges here from Max Rail scouring out into Delta, trying to clear up his point and... Well, a little bit unsupported. Got some OT-64s moving in, unloading their infantry guys, as these Vidalskis, yeah, Vidalskis move through. Yeah, 
And the thing is, even Rail... Redfall still kind of has map control. They're holding on to Echo Rail. Bravo has still have a foothold in. And they are still defending Delta. But they're such a huge point. It's roughly like 220 points. So, they really need to start getting those command vehicles out and capturing those sectors. Though they could put another one into Bravo, but I think in... Well, you wouldn't want to put it here because that would be a little bit too obvious. Maybe in this forest or his forest or his forest. But still rather unsupported. Too bad I don't have any infantry command vehicles. That would help out an awful lot. Yeah, Sniper setting up in the top hand side of Echo, which is always a smart thing to do. I mean, if you do lose this point, attacking through here is... It can be rather risky unless you have the infantry to move through and fight through the forest. So, setting up on this top hand hill, you know, getting a tank here, and yeah, some ATGM guys make sure they don't come up. And then using this as a point to flank down, because going from here to here, that's like 200 meters. And that's only 200 meters if you happen to be exposed to enemy fire. And it, all you need to do is get some guys in this town, and you can easily rout them out. You know, here's just going to be using this to flank around once again and to go for taking the uh, scenic route into the area. It's too bad uh, Redford doesn't have any recon guys up here to see this uh, tomfoolery happening. They yeah, are bringing up an AVR-28, the uh, half fast B5. Dropping in some bombs. And... Yeah, they go. And that uh, plane got shot down by the Pivads. Do I do love Pivads. I mean, they are, they are kind of better AA choices to get, but goddamn, it's a minigun. It's... Can't really say no to miniguns. Teapot still hold on to Echo rather well, just pretty much playing it to finish Ray, just hiding in the forest. And they do have a CV in Echo, but once again, it's just it's just a command vehicle. If something wants to just pop over, they can easily just snipe you. And it is in a uh, sneaky location. Barely avoiding mortar fire. And do have the longbow set up in Bravo, and god damn, this is longbow territory right here. Open fields for days. You you can just snipe anything as it comes through. We got light riflemen doing their thing. And they only against APCs, they will be able to one-shot kill them. No, uh, they can pretty much almost one-shot kill those APCs. But the M4 dropping in bombs, but this time it did get shot down. Do you have an air defense network from Max Ro pardon, from Max Rail with like Hawks and the Pivadge. And even bring up some tanks too, so definitely doubling down in the sector. Can't kind of even Delta alone, which is honestly a smart idea. It's very hard to fully hold on to that sector. But the thing is, Red Force now gaining that point advantage. A slow plus run used to be plus two, but the Foxtrot CV got sniped, it seems. Oh no, it just removed, it just had to move. But in a plus two point advantage, 16 minutes, they can easily catch up. It's just making sure their command vehicles survive, because that copper did get mortared. It didn't get hit. And we've got Marines flanking around in Delta. And just attacking fully into Delta may not be the best idea. But, you know, just having a command infantry guys need to neutralize a point, that will also help. And defending this part of Delta is usually a bit easier. You get some guys in the town, some tanks over here to cover the open area. And just try to make a no man's land between this forest up here and your town down below. So Blue are doing their best to try to keep their point advantage at an all time high. We got some Rakitas being brought up, the crazy napalm launcher. But uh, a lot of unsupported light riflemen easily knock him out. And who's, whoever idea it was to put helicopter rocket launchers on top of an APC is um, must have been a creative fellow. You do have a command Centaurian being brought up into Echo. So, yeah, rather smart idea. Pulling it back, you don't want to risk it for the biscuit just yet.
I'm wondering, can he see this guy being brought up with the Panthers? Pan. whatever these guys are called? Yes, he can. Which is rather surprising because I believe they only have, like, medium optics. Yeah, medium optics. Nothing exactly great. But yeah, he can see him. Which definitely helps out. Red Bull still gaining that plus one point advantage. And they're going to be catching up to the lead rather soon. Here we do have the CV and Echo being brought up from blue. Here it's a little bit unsupported. We do have some infantry being brought up to cover it, yo. And down below, here we go. Delta neutralized. And that is going to be kind of a saving grace over here. Because now Red Bull is going to have to spend money getting a big attack or decent sized attack force to clear out the bottom of this and with infantry inside of towns and forests it's a rather tricky situation <laughs> funny thing is yeah sniper brought a cv into delta or max Rail did the same thing so it must have been a miscommunication yeah i mean might as well just put the second one in there try to hold on to the point advantage for a bit longer we got the il 28 dropping in more bombs kaboom surprisingly these guys survived with their crappy boat action rifles. Like, the last thing I'd want to, you know, bring to a modern day war is a boat action rifle. And I'm outgunned at that point. And we got mortars pretty much covering the Centaurian. As well as the Messi RV 103s. The uh, good runs, the so good runs. These are, these are rather fun tanks to use. I mean, they are, they are better for all the price, but 15 rounds a minute, you can... Very hard to say no to that fire rate. They do lack in a little bit in terms of armor penetration, and they do lack in armor as well. Not exactly the most heavily armored tank for the price. Y.B. Abrams would like to say hello. And Blue for hold on to Bravo. Bravo, he just hold on to the town part, which is... Pretty easy to defend. You got ATGM guys all over the place and a big open field. As well as a longbow as your guardian angel getting the snipe on the command vehicle. Oh boy. If they only had an infantry command vehicle. And the other Centaurian up top getting killed by the infantry. OT64 moves up, gets blown up. It seems we've got some marines stationed in the forest. And it seems like it's going to be a GG for Blue Fool. Taking the point advantage. As we finish this match off. There goes the SAS. And that'll be a good game for Blue, taking the victory by roughly 900 kills. And yeah, just, they played the point game and they won the point game. I think for, um, for Redfall, yeah, early attack into middle went flipping wonderfully for them. They just didn't take advantage of that and get into the town. They really needed to spread out all over the Bravo town instead of just defending that top hand side. But they did a good job, Red Fork, considering they had top hand both two sectors completely under their control. Really good job with their defense with the Finnish and Polish units and infantry. But Blue Fork played the point, played the point game better. They played down south, neutralized Jat, sniped some enemy command vehicles, which always helps. And yeah, that's that's what allowed them to win that run. And I'm going to shut up and leave it at yeah. This has been another Rangaroo Cars. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.